Hey guys, it's Nick. Thanks for tuning in to Long Island Wargaming, and this is a battle report, also somewhat of a discussion with me and Ryan, but there is a battle here to be seen, and this is uh, 3,000 points with my Skaven for Brawler's Bash, and uh, this is going to be the, against the new Wood Elves. Here is the battlefield. To the right, we've got a forest, uh, and up against the back line, to the top of the screen, are three forests, uh, three venom thickets. So, uh, obviously, Ryan used the acorn, and to the left, you know my army, but we're going to take a look at his. He's got some proxies in here, because our Wood Elf models really aren't, you know, assembled and ready to go. So, left to right, we have an eagle. We've got some war dancers chilling out there. Uh, there's a f glade guard in that forest. They've got poison. A big brick of wildwood riders. Uh, all three of these forests are venom thickets. Uh, the two are proxied by paper. Um, there is a tree man, proxied by a giant. Uh, more glade guard. Uh, they have the eternal fire banner with their poison uh, shots, with their poison bows. Uh, another eagle and some wild riders, and yet another eagle. In the big unit, there is a caster with uh, level four of high magic and there's a level two somewhere with beasts and right off the bat ryan gets turn one and this is my little counter that i'm working on this is the storm banner so uh the storm banner goes off everything is at minus two to hit uh, this side of the battlefield there was the mundane forest that uh, just came with our preset terrain before all the wood elf forests and he has two units of eight way watchers and then a bunch of the uh what were those guys the frenzied cavalry the wild riders uh he's so far back so a lot of his offensive spells were out of range he casts swissens onto the rangers uh, i do deny that uh, he gets off drain power onto his guys also uh, just to get one of those little tokens for uh when he goes to take a wound on that unit with the lore attribute for the high magic. And he casts another spell, I don't remember what it was, but he eventually has two tokens now. So the Storm Banner is great when it comes to the ballistic skill situation because everything's at long range also, uh, so it's minus three to hit me. But the uh, unit of archers that are hiding in that forest above the hell pit, uh, they are still within 30 inches, so they are hitting and wounding, uh, well, hitting on sixes, and then that's poison, so they actually managed to get three wounds onto the hell pit. One unit of Way Watchers is able to do two more wounds, and the second unit of Way Watchers finishes them off. Uh, to my surprise, the Rot Dart to the right does not panic off the battlefield. They end up rolling like a four for leadership. So, Skaven turn two, the banner actually stops, and I move up everything as quickly as I can. The Doom Wheel didn't move up as quickly, and neither did the Hell Pit, so I actually wasn't able to move up all my troops as fast as I wanted to. The Storm Vermin have to enter the building, this way they can get past it, so they're chilling in there. And here's the other angle, just showing how I kind of got caught up over here on the left flank with the Hell Pit, moving slowly. So, for magic, the only thing I was able to get through was um, Warp Lightning, and I got it onto the Tree Man. But then I rolled a freaking one, so I ended up doing a wound to myself. But I rolled a one again, so I didn't even wound myself. But that was kind of a waste. Uh, here you can see that the lightning cannon is shooting straight through the big brick of guys. I actually am able to land the template on a handful of them. I end up killing nine of them, uh, which is good, so I kind of peeled off a rank. So, Wood Elf turn two. These guys are frenzied, the Wild Riders, and they're in charge range of both the Slaves and the Giant Rats. The Giant Rats end up being closer, they have to charge the Giant Rats, and they false charge and move up six inches. And we have these Glade Guard that come on. They are ambushers, so they come up, and they've got poison bows, so they should be able to do some damage uh, to that um, Warp Lightning Cannon with shooting. And no movement happens here. Just the war dancers swing around a little bit. The eagles shuffle around too. And the way watchers just move about. This eagle here decides to march up next to this uh, building. So the hell pit will be unable to charge him because he has to stay an inch away from the building when he pivots to move or whatever. And he can't really get it through that angle. But it also prevents the storm room from popping out right in front of the building. So that's a very good uh, delaying tactic. Cheesy tactic nonetheless. But a way to you know prevent my guys from coming through. The Doom Wheel gets shot down with all the different poison attacks. I didn't roll any out of control tests, so that was a, a shame, because that would have been cool if I, you know, ran forward and did some stuff as I die, but nope. 
So my turn two, I am holding nothing back. I move everything up as quickly as I can. That is including the bell unit and the slaves here to the right. Uh, the storm ribbon are able to come out with their back touching the building to the side over there, and the help it didn't move up too far forward, so I wasn't able to wheel them up too much. But um, yeah, so this is what my movement looks like. And this is where things get a little stupid. I roll up 11 for Winds of Magic. I don't channel, but I do have two uh, two weird stone tokens left. And I roll up the bell, and I roll up a 17. This is like the third game in a row it's happened. I, I don't, I've never, I've never rolled a 17 in all the years I've been playing this, the freaking book, and I've gotten it three times. And uh, it's, it's just, it's crazy. It's not as crazy as his previous games because... Uh, I'm not in combat, so that plus one attack with the reroll missed hits, me roll missed wounds doesn't help me. But now everyone's moving up D6 inches again, which is very helpful. Because the bell unit rolls a 6, so I'm able to march forward 6 inches, and that actually puts me within 12 inches of my opponent, which will now allow me to get wither off. I first try to get, uh, get rid of some of his dispel dice. I go ahead and use Warp Lightning on the Tree Man. That's proxy there. And uh, I'm able to do two wounds onto him. And then we go for Wither, which I get Wither onto the Wildwood Ranger unit. And uh, Ryan is going to gamble it because at this point we've ruled that the, uh, the High Elf, uh, the, the the high magic spell that gets rid of magical effects will affect that toughness reduction. So he might, he's thinking of saving, letting that through, and then just six dicing or um, using his scroll. I forget how it worked out on wither when it comes on plague when it comes. But when plague comes, I irresistible force it. <laughs> so he's unable to do it. The gamble is not worth it because he's losing guys. Uh, you can see he lost about two ranks of that unit and uh, Plague bounces back to me and I lose about half my unit here if not more and uh, it bounces again and it goes on over to the Glade Guard which completely obliterates them also. And at the end of the video we will discuss whether it was a good idea or not for Ryan to have it bounce back to me or not because the opponent when rolling a one on Plague can choose to either end it or let it continue. Since I marched up so close with the bell uh, Doom Rocket had to shoot at an awkward angle, but man, I get this nice 14 inch shot onto this unit of Glade Guard, which end up getting wrecked. And the Lightning Cannon goes ahead and does enough wounds to finish off the giant, the tree man, I should say. And we end up leaving it at that. Ryan says there's no way he's going to be able to win this game, which I agree, and I played differently than I normally do because I'm just so used to sitting back that I, I just had to run forward, especially an army that's not going to try to come and fight me anyway because it's all shooting. But um, the bell that got me that extra six inches had me move 26 inches in two turns, which allowed me to get real close for my spells that I need to, and the fact that I was able to just get up in his face was uh, absolutely amazing. So um, thank you for watching this game, but I do have... Um, I mean, there's only, it's only two turns, but I do have some afterthoughts from me and Ryan. Since it was a quick game, we decided to record some audio. So let's bounce into that. Feel free to listen and uh, leave your comments below. Thanks, guys. All right, so we just finished up the game. Here's some post-game thoughts from Ryan, too. So we got the Wills. We got Cheesy Skaven List. Just just a rough game. What are, what are you thinking? Oh, oh man. <sighs> Skaven Cheese. Ah. Uh... It comes down to the big things for Skaven doing what they're supposed to do against a list that had shooting but not an abundance of it. Uh, I don't know. I wanted to try a couple different things out. I wanted to try War Dancers. I wanted to keep a tree man, tree man for the sake of a tree man. And bring Way Watchers because they, they're pretty cool. They didn't do a whole lot over on the other side of the board. No. Um, the things that killed me were a successive string of large template and or test, <laughs> unit test, uh, shenanigans. Well, I just, I'm just having a hard time with the idea that an 8th edition book, almost 9th edition book, can't hold up against freaking... Skaven? Old Skaven, yeah. Yeah. And, I don't know, I know 9th edition might be around the corner, and, you know, Skaven will have their time to, to get nerfed, but... I just, 
don't know. I, I, I was really excited for Woodells, but like after seeing them on the field, I know Skaven and they're kind of OP at, in some levels, but what are, like what? Are, cool, they've got a whole lot of shooting. That that's I mean, if the shooting doesn't work for you, what are you gonna do? Yeah. What are they gonna do against other armies like this? Like say vampire cats, lots of bodies, some flying toys you can shoot down. But once those bodies get into combat, what are you gonna do? Yeah. See, even this game right here, Nick. Though, I probably could have gone in and taken points off of you. The problem becomes though that in order to do what this list, at least the list that I designed, this is probably not an optimal list, but I have to be static. I have to be on the back line. I have to be performing kind of as a pseudo gun line, I, I think, in order to allow my stuff the maximal amount of time to shoot. My silly poison glade guard, which did just fine. Yeah. Um, they actually probably took their points back um, between the things that they actually killed. And uh, maybe another turn of shooting, they probably would have been okay. Right. Because I could probably, what, pick the bell out of this unit? Not that I'd wanted to. But. Yeah, I mean, you also did, with, with a round of minus... Two to shoot with the storm banner, and most things at long range, you were still able to, uh, yeah. yeah, to to hit some stuff. I mean, you brought a, took a help it down right right away, but it's the scaven randomness. Let's face it, I moved up six inches with that bell. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I rolled a yes. freaking seventeen. I've never I've been playing this book for five years. I've never rolled seventeens like this as often as I have been. This is like the third game I've rolled a seventeen. Do you know what's funny? Actually, that right there put you in charge range, whereas you wouldn't have been before, had I done this and moved back, Right, would have given me two turns to keep you at bay. You use magic. Because my magic is undiminished. I still had fiery convocation, which I had yet to get off. Right. Um, which unfortunately didn't help me much, but... Um, yeah. Templates. Templates versus toughness three. <laughs> and plague. <laughs> so, another thing that I mentioned in the battle report was... Should Ryan have let the plague keep going, or should he have stopped it? And in hindsight, you probably should have yeah, stopped it. Absolutely, absolutely. Because then it went on to your I, other Glade Guard units. Yeah, part of the problem is I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't want to say uh, I, I'm not as familiar with Skaven Magic. Having it, well, we, as we discussed, Magic Res, right? Mm-hmm. Not. I don't think the the points cost. For the the rats, right? Uh-huh. The, the twenty five rats, whatever it was, the point cost for that justified allowing it to potentially bounce to one of my other units and deplete. Right. But uh, what is one hundred and seventy five points worth of glade guard? That's true. And plus, I made an error and didn't even roll up my magic res. Yes, so right. I would have saved even more rats. Yeah. So let's say fifteen twenty rats, seven points a piece, right? Right. So you know, a nice chunk of rats, but not worth me losing my shooting. Rats are five points a piece. Oh, all right. So <laughs> yuck. It's, it's, it would have not been a very good trade. Oh, no. I would have... Ne- yeah. In hindsight, I would have never never allowed it to keep going. No. That would have saved my Glade Guard and given me 21 poisonous shots into that unit, which probably would have yielded the same result. Oh. So, but take Skaven out of the factor. What do you think of the new book, having played it this one time? In a not very fair game. Um, Just fine. I mean... You came across the board faster than normal, which helps, right? I've never moved that quickly, too. Yeah. By, and by turn two, I moved up 20 inches, plus six for the, plus the six. belt. Yeah. Yeah, you had crossed into my deployment zone on turn two, which is pretty crazy. I moved 26 inches in two turns. I, I, now, saying that, I wonder whether or not I would have been better served using my eagles earlier to force you to charge... And, and just slow me down? And slow you down. Yeah, because I would if you would have moved right up to me, I would have had to charge him. I would have moved up an inch to get to you. And then I would have overran on an average of seven. Yeah. So those eagles could have slowed me down a lot. A lot. But I didn't see the bell unit being the one that was going to come in and do the damage. I was thinking the well, bell was going to be... It didn't, <laughs> right? I, would have thought, I thought the bell was going to be the second wave. I thought that's yeah. the, the freaking storm burn were going to go in. You put, you put the, be- the, the eagle in front of the building. Yeah. Which was a nice way to block me from coming through. But uh, I thought the vermin were going to come in and, and deal with those rangers. Rangers, yeah. Yeah, wild well, rangers. Who I was not impressed with on the defensive side. No, no. How many points is a... a uh, I don't know. I just like the high elf infantry are just so much better. Now, then, I, I wonder... They'd probably benefit pretty heavily from magic res. Yeah. If I'm going to be putting the BSB in there... The BSB, I don't... 
See, I, I kitted the BSB out to be combat. Mm-hmm. Have a good armor save. I probably would instead want to give him magic res to keep the unit alive. Because they'll be in the forest, they'll be at minus one to hit, be at long range for most ballistic skill shooting up until, you know, towards the end. They're safer from that. Right. Oh! So dumb. What'd you do? I had the Iron Curse icon. I you had the Iron Curse? Yeah. I could have rolled sixes for some of that. Oh, well. I don't think it would have made much of a difference. No. So I think I'm pretty happy with this Skaven list for Brawlers. Maybe another tweak or two. One thing I have to decide, which isn't a big deal, is... Warp Fire Thrower attached to the Stormbringer of the Clan Rats. That's not a big thing to figure out. And I have like 50 points to play with because I've got that one Chieftain chilling out in the Bell unit. It's 45 points, then 2 points for a Halberd. He has 3 attacks, which is alright. If I get Death Frenzy off, okay, 5 attacks and Strength 5. Weapon Skill 5, that's nice, but no defense whatsoever. Okay, heavy armor, but no defense really. I could take that 50 points and do something else. I can get rid of the freaking warp fire thrower and take that end of 50 points and buy a whole other unit of some Put bullshit. But unit of gutter runners on the table. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, gutter runners on the table. I didn't even bring him out this game. Yeah. But, oh well. Anything else? No, I don't think so. All right, well, thanks for uh, watching or listening at this point, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.